Hey, how you doing? My name is Locke. I'm from 2MCCTV.com. Today I'm just going to talk about network basics for um, just mainly towards when you're installing an IP camera. So this is geared towards the people that don't want to learn absolutely everything about networking, but just enough to get them to get the IP their IP cameras up. So before we start, um, essential rules that we're gonna that we have to follow is um, make sure no two devices have the same IP address. When you're connected to a network, each device are identified by their IP address, so they must have a unique IP address. And if possible, we want them to be on a static IP address. If you know what static IP address means, um, don't worry, I'll explain that pretty soon. And make sure the IP address has the same subnet and the gateway as the router. So right here, this is a little little diagram I drew up with my beautiful artistic skills. Um, basically, this is a uh, this is your basic layout of a network. So just imagine your home network. It has your home network most likely is going to have a router, and you're going to have computers connected to it and the router is most likely going to be the one with that four ports and you know the one port on the side and you're going to have computers connected to that router that gives the internet so most of the computers that uh, you know are set most of the computers are set to DHCP and what that means is it automatically obtains an IP address from the router so the router delegates that you know that feature where you know when you connect your computer to the router it gets internet and gets an IP address so let's say I connect these two computers the router's gonna give me you know an IP address 192.168.1.10 and dot eleven you know this is just an example so it could give you a different IP address so it's gonna give me the main thing is gonna give me a unique IP address it's gonna give me a subnet of 255.255.255.0 and it's gonna say it's gonna give me a gateway of 192.168.1.1 which is the router's IP address so before I go any further uh, when what subnet means is if you if you can see it has this 255.255.255.0 that's 255 is the, the most you can go to so 255.255.255 means that the first three numbers right here see how they're segmented down into four groups so the first three groups are 255 that means if a device is connected to this network and the router's subnet is that 255.255.255.0 the first three numbers is going to be it's going to have to be the same so it's going to be 192 one six eight dot one. So that means any device that is going to connect to this network with this subnet is going to the first three segments. I know it's going to be one nine two one six eight dot one. Now the last segment is the zero. So it goes the maximum it could go up to is two five two hundred fifty five. But by default the right, the network takes away one. So you could have up to two hundred fifty four devices. So that means I can have, you know, up to 254 device, you know, IP cameras, the computer, whatever that's connected to the network. You know, technically I can do that. But let's move on. So remember what the subnet means and remember that when you're connecting an IP camera, the gateway has to match the router's IP address. The subnet has to match the uh the router subnet and the IP address has to be unique so no other computer or IP cameras can have the same IP address when it comes to the private network so what I also want to talk about is DHCP and static so DHCP when you think of DHCP just think of automatically obtaining IP address or just automatic just make those words synonymous with each other when it comes to networking so when you go on your computer or any IP uh, camera, you're gonna there's always gonna be option for DHCP or there's always gonna be option that says obtain IP address automatically or something that is regarding about getting the IP address automatically. And then there's static. Static is where you just set your your IP address. You have to enter in all these information in by yourself. Now the upside of this is when the router 
gives that IP address, there's something called a DHCP lease time, meaning that it'll lease you out an IP address for a certain amount of days. It depends on your router, certain amount of days or maybe months. Um, and once that time runs out, it has the option of just assign you a new IP address. Now, personally, even though the DHCP lease time runs out, I notice that sometimes my IP address will still retain the same IP address. But when we're talking about installing an IP camera, we don't want to risk that. So it's much better to set it up to a static IP address. And basically, that's that's just the basics. Um, remember, when you're setting up the, the, your IP camera, uh, just follow these three rules to avoid any uh, any issues. Because if you're breaking these three rules, for sure your your IP camera is not going to communicate through the network properly. And I know this is uh this is just meant to give you you know to get your uh, feet wet. We're going to do some more videos just dedicated towards IP cameras and. I'll post one up really soon of me setting up a new IP cameras. Oh, before I go on, um, here's the example I, I, you know, I drew right here. As you see, I drew another device connected right here, and I connect. Just imagine me connecting this to my router. By default, the factory set the IP address to 192.168.0.10, and you know my gateway is 192.168.0.1 with the subnet of 255.255.255.0. So with the with the information right here, do you think that this IP camera is going to work? It's not going to work because our IP address, remember, our subnet is right, but the first three segment doesn't doesn't matches match our network's first three segment or most important our router's first three segment. So this is supposed to be one nine two one six eight, not zero. We're going to change this to one. And we don't want to leave this at 10 because someone is already using the IP address of 192.168.1.10. So I'm just going to change this to 12. Okay, now my subnet. It's good. It's 255.255.255.0. And lastly, my gateway is 192.168.0.1, which of course will not work because remember, we have to our gateway has to match the router's IP address because that's at the end that's what we're connected to so we're going to change it to one and I know what you're thinking I thought this when I first got into networking uh, you know for the first time uh, I, I thought that you know even though the IP camera is connected physically to the router shouldn't it already realize that um, well it doesn't because the any devices any device that will let you set this option will only do what you tell it to do. So if you're trying to tell it to find 192.168.0.1, it's going to try to find that device, even though it's physically connected to this. You know, it's going to find a 192.168.0.1. So that's why it's important that you set everything up correct and make sure your IP addresses are correct. So again, that's just a uh, you know, just quick overview and just the essentials I think someone should know when they're setting up an IP camera. Make sure to check out other videos and our upcoming videos that we'll be uploading very soon. Thanks for watching this video and make sure you visit our website www.2mcctv.com.